Alright guys, a couple weeks ago I did a video called Perfect 1010 Fragrances Niche Category. Today we're doing the designer category and I've got 20 fragrances here that are Perfect 1010 Fragrances from designers. A lot of these are from their private exclusive collections. Yes, uh, I prefer those a little more than their signature lines. There's a few signature fragrances here as well. Plus I've got a Zara. A Zara has made the list. Find out what they are coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today we've got perfect 1010 fragrances from the designers. And I'm going to tell you what they are. We're going to go ahead and get started. First off, uh, going to the house of Dior. We've got Vanilla Diorama. This one right here. I feel like this is a perfect uh, 1010 fragrance. I love everything about it. The way it wears, the way it smells. It's syrupy. It's a little citrusy, but mostly vanilla with some spices and a bit of a chocolatey touch. Dries down to kind of a patchouli woody dry down. Fantastic um, uh, fragrance. I love it. It has beat out Feb Delicious but find out a little more coming up. And this has to be on the list. It's a perfect, perfect, perfect 1010 fragrance. It's Dior Homme Parfum. Yes, it's a bit difficult to get this. It is available in, in Europe or EU and France. Anyone going there, anyone you know going there, ask them to get a bottle for you. But what I love about this is the iris and the sandalwood and of course the leatheriness, the ambrette's muskiness and a bit light oodiness under there. There's a bit of a rose presence so it gives you a bit of a makeup vibe but really, really amazing fragrance. Really love it. So that's from a, a Dior, Dior en Parfum. That is the 100 mil version. So I'm putting the de designers together, grouping them. This is an unranked list. I'm also making sure that the fragrances are still currently selling. I'm trying not to include fragrances that are discontinued. So we're going to go on to the house of um, Cartier. Uh, this is Pasha de Cartier Parfum um, at the bottom of my bottle as you can see. Uh, I bought this fragrance uh, just before the pandemic and it's one of the best designer fragrances for men. Sure it's a bit old school, definitely brings over or carries over the DNA of the original from the early 90s but certainly modernizes it and makes it like ambery warm. It's an amber fougere, it has ambery notes, some boozy notes, patchouli, labdanum, really great fragrance. This is Pasha de Cartier Parfum. And then of course this one, this is an absolutely fantastic fragrance from Cartier's high-end luxury collection of um, fragrances. This is Oud Radeau, this one right here. Really, really love Oud Radeau. I love the zing and the spice of the ginger in this. It's a ginger oud combo with a bit of a lemony Sichuan pepper. So it's mostly about the ginger. Then the oud comes in and you have that spiciness from the Sichuan pepper which contributes to a bit of a lemoniness. This is fantastic. Really, really love it. I don't know if I would really call it an oud fragrance. I would call it more of a ginger fragrance. But the oud does come in, but it's about the ginger. Oud Radeau is fantastic. It's a perfect, perfect 1010 fragrance. So I'm trying to make sure there's not more than two fragrances from each house. And there are some houses that I've skipped and you'll notice as we go through the list. Now we're going to Tom Ford and this is Tobacco Vani. I absolutely love Tobacco Vani. To me it brings me uh, or gives me the holiday vibe which I really really love it. I wear it around Thanksgiving and of course it's also really a wonderful combination of tobacco with uh, vanilla and I love these notes. They're, they're really really great notes and this is a perfect mixture of all the different notes and ingredients that they have in here. They've got tobacco leaf, tobacco flower, they've got vanilla, there's some cacao, there's ginger, there's dried fruits, spices, delicious delicious fragrance. This is Tobacco Vanille from the house of um, Tom Ford. And then a second fragrance from the house of Tom Ford. It's Noir Extreme Parfum. I'm actually really, really in love with this one. It's a great take on the original. It's been intensified, beefed up. Really everything is very luxurious and concentrated and really delicious smelling. It's basically taking the original to a very luxury parfum direction. With tonka beans, there's sandalwood here, there's amber, cedar, ginger, cardamom, guyac, Wood. Really, really delicious. It's a male fragrance, male targeted release, totally unisex. It's Noir Extreme Parfum. Totally love, love, love that one. Now moving on to the house of Chanel and we've got two less exclusives uh, from Chanel. Nothing from their signature line. This is Le Leon. Absolutely an amazing amber fragrance. One of the best designer fragrances out there. It smells fantastic. 
great longevity. It's vanilla with ambery notes. There's patchouli in here. There's musk in here, sandalwood. And of course, it has a bit of a lemony citrus touch when you first spray it. There's amber here. And there's some reminders of other fragrances. First of all, there's a bit of a reminder of Guerlain's Shalimar, some reminder of Coromandel, maybe even a further faint reminder of Coeur de Russie. But Lelion, super fantastic fragrance, really love it. And then, of course, Coromandel. Coromandel is the patchouli balm from uh, Chanel. A uh, really great patchouli with the combination of uh, the earthy, uh, kind of uh, intense uh, dry patchouli. Uh, wonderfully, you know, meshed with benzoin. There's this kind of a sweet vanillic resin here. So there's a vanillic touch and also a white chocolatey touch here. And of course they've thrown in some frankincense or olibanum to give it a bit of a churchy, smoky incense running throughout it. But it's a fantastic fragrance. I really love it. I love the sillage and I love the trail on that one for sure. And I love uh, its intensity. and the beautiful patchouli contrasted with that, um, of course, the, uh, you know, benzoin note that kind of acts like white chocolate. Up next, going to the house of Hermes, I've got one Hermes fragrance. This is Equipage Geranium. This one right here, it's a male targeted release. If you haven't noticed, we've got unisex offerings here and also male targeted. I have left off feminine fragrances off the list. Uh, Equipage Geranium is a great take on geranium and sandalwood together with some cloves and it acts like a fougere fragrance, a barbershop uh, fragrance. It also kind of reminds me of Boy from Chanel, but I absolutely love this one. It's a bit old school, but modern. It's aromatic. It's spicy and woody. Beautiful fragrance. Equipage Geranium is fantastic. If you don't know it, check it out. And then one fragrance from YSL. I am featuring Baby Cat. Yes, the Baby Cat is a really super phenomenal fragrance. Really, really love it with the vanilla and olibanum. And of course, there's definitely saffron here, which kind of gives you the leathery suede accord. There's black pepper, elemi resin, pink pepper. So it's spicy, it's vanillic, it's dry, it's leathery, suede leathery, and of course, smoky as well. Really fantastic fragrance. A great fragrance. They can't keep it on the shelves. It sells out over and over and over again. Very, very popular. But sadly, it's not released here in the States. Either way, Baby Cat is super, super amazing if you don't know it. I'm featuring this one. This is one of my favorite cheapies. It's Bentley for Men Intense. Love, love, love it. It is uh, ambery, it's spicy, it's resinous, it's a bit smoky. There's, of course, booziness in here. So black pepper, wood, cinnamon, cedar, bay leaf, some, some green aromatics running throughout it. And I feel like it's a super fantastic fragrance that you can get for really inexpensive. Sure, if you're not into the idea of these kind of leathery, ambery, smoky, you know, aromatic fragrances. You might like this one, but it's a, an amazing fragrance, I think, and it's a job well done by Natalie Lorsan, who's created some amazing fragrances. This is one of her greatest creations, I think. So, Bentley for Men Intense, amazing fragrance. And then we'll go into the house of um, Givenchy. This is MMW. Yeah, this came out last year. It's a bit molecular. It's very woody and also... Um, musky as well and I like the Palo Santo usage usage in here with the Ambroxan and Vetiver, ISOE Super, Cedar and Cardamom so there's a bit of spice but what I like about this one it's the muskiness that it creates and you put it on it's not super intense but it's the warmth of your body that starts creating some projection and some trail and that's when you, you start smelling it and you go wow this is a really fantastic fragrance so when you probably just smell it out of the bottle you're going to think what's the big deal about this fragrance but wear it very similar to other molecular fragrances in that if you like the idea of Ambroxan and ISOE Super along with some of these other notes you keep wearing it and you're going to notice how great and fantastic it's going to start smelling when you um, uh, you know when you're starting to wear this fragrance and your body is heating up. So MMW from Givenchy I think is a great fragrance really definitely worth checking out if you haven't checked it out yet. And then going to the house of Givenchy this is Noctambule probably one of the best designer oud fragrances. I really love the way this smells. Uh, it's oud and rose actually. You know I like Louis Vuitton's Ombre Nomade which is here coming right after this but this one to me is actually even better because Ombre Nomade does seem like it's missing a little something but here it's such a beautiful fragrance with the rose. There's two kinds of roses here. There's papyrus, oud, and a wonderful combination of notes. There's a bit of spice in here as well, like a little bit of cumin spice, which adds this nice contrast and kind of, you know, segue into a different direction, but then it's all about the rose and the oud. Really wonderful fragrance. Noctambule. If you haven't tried that, uh, definitely try it. And speaking of Ombre Nomad, I do have it here. It's definitely great, and sometimes I layer it with uh, Louis Vuitton's um, 
the 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 rose uh, oud uh, fragrance where it's mostly about rose and then there's some oud here it's mostly about the oud there's some benzoin here to create an ambery touch some incense and some fruitiness from raspberry a great oud fragrance it is missing a little rose but if you're not into the idea of rose this is a perfect perfect oud fragrance i think and a great designer offering so ombre nomad from the house of louis vuitton wonderful fragrance and then moving on to the house of loewe it's 001 man really really love this fragrance really do it's kind of uh, uh, its own version or inspiration maybe like something like Dior Homme and that line of kind of irisy fragrances for men. This one actually uses carrot seed to create the powdery effect. So it goes into a bit of a vegetal direction along with violet. There's ambrette, there's musk and cypress. It's super sexy. I really, really love the way this smells and I think it definitely deserves to be on this list of 1010 fragrances from designers. This is a signature line fragrance obviously and I think Loewe is definitely a great house with great fragrances, totally underrated and definitely worth checking out if you haven't checked out any fragrances from Loewe. Now on to that Zara fragrance. Uh, it's still selling. This is Leather Jardin. I think, man, this is so good. I now have three bottles of this. Two are stored away. Here is one. And I love the way this smells. Sure, it's a bit old school, but I like what they've done here. It's created by Joe Malone. It's featuring notes of leather, rose, and grapefruit. There's sure a green no greenness in here and a bit of a sheep quality here. And, and, and it does remind me of some uh, fragrances of yesteryear, but I really love it. It's a great, great fragrance, and I'm glad they're still selling it. And it's super super amazing and also not very expensive leather jardin check it out if you don't know it i really really recommend i highly recommend that fragrance especially if you're into more of an old school style of fragrance really uh or maybe you're training your nose to appreciate some old school fragrances definitely check that out because it's like a 90 ml bottle for like 40 bucks so totally totally worth it up next going to the house of uh bulgari this is tigar Tigar is a super fantastic, sexy, musky fragrance featuring grapefruit. It features ambroxan and woodsy notes. Maybe there's a bit of an ambery touch down there as well. And definitely, for sure, muskiness. But really, really great fragrance. I love the way it smells. I do get a bit of a gingery vibe in here as well. And I think it's the grapefruit contributing to that because there's that zing and spice and bitterness with grapefruit that I kind of sometimes mistake for ginger. But a wonderful fragrance. Really, really love it. I love the... Not the intensity because it's not uber intense, but I, I was talking about MMW earlier about how it might not come off very beefy, but when you wear it and your body heats up a little bit and the siage and projection happens, this is uh, perfection and uh, this is definitely another fragrance that does that with uh, when you're wearing it. So really love the way it smells. I like that kind of bitterness and the zing from the grapefruit contrasted with the ambroxan. This is Tigar from the House of Bulgari, wonderful fragrance. And then moving on to the House of Costume National, Soul. I haven't spoken about Soul, but definitely one of the best oud fragrances out there from the designers. It's a small Italian niche designer house and they offer like niche style fragrances. This is created by Dominic Rupion. Has notes of oud, leather, amber grebe with cardamom, pink pepper, vanilla, and patchouli. Yeah, it's everything you need in an oud fragrance, but with, without that rose, because there's a whole slew of uh, fragrances that feature oud and rose together. This is definitely very leathery and also musky and, and has that very prominent amber green note, but lots of spices to kind of like tone down the animalic qualities of the amber green. And of course, it's got vanillic and patchouli touches when it's drying down. Soul is a Amazing from the house of Costume National. You guys know that one? Let me know. Put a comment down below so I can find out. And then finally moving on to the house of Celine. This has become my favorite fragrance from this house. It was a toss-up between this and Dom Paris, but this is now my favorite. It's black tie. It's the vanilla from this house. And this is vanilla with orris. There's cedar. There's moss and musk. It's really, really delicious. It also has a very powdery quality about it and also a cohesive connection to a lot of their other fragrances, which has this kind of an orris DNA. I feel like they mention orris quite a bit in a lot of their fragrances. And I feel like that's their signature because it goes from one to the other. They have this kind of like quality and it becomes very very connected here they're focusing on the vanilla with the orris and of course that cedar comes in and that kind of green earthy moss note comes in lots of musk it's super delicious and a great name black tie from celine 
amazing fragrance. And then finally, ending the list with this fragrance from uh, Comme des Garçons. This is Marseille. Marseille has become my favorite fragrance from Comme des Garçons, and I really love it for the soapiness. It's just basically inspired by Marseille soap. If you like the idea of soapy fragrances, you gotta get your nose on Marseille because it smells fantastic. It does feature notes of neroli, musk, cosmone, patalia, orange blossom, woods, and amber. Of course, I associate neroli orange blossom with soapy fragrances, and it's a given that it's used here. A perfect fragrance created by Quinton Biche. It's Marseille, and I love it. It's a great fragrance. Are you guys familiar with that one? Are you a fan of uh, Comme des Garçons? Let me know. Put a comment down. And that's the list. That's the 20 fragrances, a top 20 list, unranked, of my perfect 1010 designer fragrances. What are your perfect 1010 designer fragrances? Do let me know. Put a com comment down below so I can find out. But either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. And then, as a bonus, since I already included two Dior fragrances, I, I wanted to highlight this as a bonus. It's also highlighted as a bonus because I think there's an uncertain, uh, uncertainty about this fragrance now. It's on its way out. We're talking about Feb Delicious, this one right here. I did a video on some fragrances that are getting discontinued from the Dior Privé collection, and so this was one of them. Uh, if you're a fan of it, go to your retailers that sell the Dior Privé collection and get yourself a bottle because we don't know how long this fragrance is going to be around. The fragrance features notes of tonka beans. There's also a bitter almondy touch with vanilla. There's cacao, caramel, cherry, praline, lavender, benzoin, a milky note, mint. Wonderful, wonderful fragrance. One of my favorite fragrances from Dior. It is now replaced with Dior Vanilla Diorama, uh, but still Feb Delicious is up there. And it's sad, sad to see it go, uh, but um, it's still one of my favorite fragrances. So it's a Feb Delicious as a bonus option. Uh, definitely deserves to be on a perfect 1010 list. But anyway, thanks so much for watching today's video. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.